This is Steve Fabian. I uh, added another table and broke out a, uh, actually added the capability to uh, create a table of categories. All right, so now what we want to do is I want to get rid of this person uh, property here, and instead I want to bring in the .NET Nuke user table and uh, create an association between my to-do my to-do list item table and the .NET Nuke user table. So we can do that by uh, updating the model from the database. It's going to allow us to connect to our database, browse, dig into the tables, find the let's find the user table. We want to bring that into our model. Hit finish. So now we've got a user table. If I look at my model browser and I look under my entity types, you'll see we brought in the user table. So I'm going to add that to my diagram. And now we've got a user table. And you can see this is the .NET Nuke user table. And we want to create an association, so we'll right click on this, add an association. The same way we added an association between our tables, we can do it between our table and the data nuke table. So we can select users and we'll do the same multiplicity many to one. So an item can have a user, we can have a user associated with an item, and a user can actually be associated with many items. Okay, so now we have this association that's been created. You can see it created navigation property down here, so and both tables. So now when I have a to-do list item, I have a reference to the user record that we associate it with and it's going to be associated through the primary key which is the user ID and in the user table it's added a foreign key called to-do list items and just for uh, I, you can rename this stuff here to make it easier I'm just going to say tasks actually it's uh, plural because this is going to be a collection so now if I through my WCF data service uh, retrieve a user record or a list of users from the the uh, user table I'll have a uh, navigation property task which will give me access to the collection of to-do list items that have been assigned to that user okay so now that I've done that save that and um, again it's going to create the web config over and over again I'm just going to wait till the end and delete it when we're done so um, I want to now update my database and this is where there's a huge warning big caveat you can do some serious damage to yourself here. Um, because we're using model first development where we're designing our entities on the entity framework canvas and then generating a script up to update the database, um, it always generates a creation script. So if we say generate database from the model, you'll see what it's going to do. It's going to drop all of our existing tables. Uh, including dropping the data nuke user table. So that's a bad thing, right? We don't want to do this. So um, uh, you just need to be careful. You can, this is just a script, so you can edit the script before we run it. So we're going to go in here and say we don't want to drop any of these tables. These tables already exist. Um, we don't want to recreate them. However, um, I can't just delete the creation statement because you'll notice what it did is it, it's actually adding a new property to my to-do list item table. So um, this takes a little SQL uh, scripting, but basically I'm going to change this to an alter table so that we can add that one column. Because I do need that new column. That's part of the foreign key relationship between my to-do list item table and the user table. Um, but I don't need to recreate my status or my category table, and I absolutely don't want to recreate my user table. Um, so we just need to get rid of all the drops, get rid of the creates. Um, notice that I'm adding a new column to this one table, so I need to change that to an alter statement. I wish this was uh, automated, but unfortunately, uh, through model first, this is this is the best we can do right now. If anybody has any suggestions on a better way to do it, let me know. If we were doing code uh, first, Entity Framework code first, where you write your, your plain old class and then generate the schema and all that stuff from code first, there's data SQL migrations. And in fact, I may do a short video on showing you how you can do code first development um, uh, with this template, and that would then give you the ability to use data migrations, in which case it would use create upgrade scripts, and you wouldn't have to worry about losing your data or editing the scripts. But for now, um, just be aware that you can do some serious damage if you don't go in and realize what you're doing with your tables, uh, edit the script before you run it. So we don't need to uh, recreate the primary keys on the existing tables, there, those should be fine. Uh, we do need to, don't need to create the primary key on the user table, but we do need, and we don't need to create foreign keys on the existing tables.
Okay. But we do need to create the new constraint and foreign key uh, for the relationship between our to-do list item table and the user table. So we're going to leave these two statements in. Okay. So now we're done. We can now right-click and execute the statement. Connect to our database and execute. And complete it successfully. We'll save that. We'll save that. Rebuild. Okay. Now let's go take a look at our service. Right click and view our service in a browser. And you now see we have a collection called users. So the same way I can grab to-do list items, I can grab uh, users. And I'm now going to get all of the records from the .NET new core user table and all of the columns and all of the data associated uh, from that table. So uh, with that relationship, I can also uh, go ahead and see for a specific user, let's say I want user with an ID of one, Oops, users, okay, so now I'm looking at the super user account, uh, I can see all the tasks associated that he's been assigned to by just doing a slash tasks. In this case, we haven't assigned any yet, but that's how you would get now the collection of all the to-do list items for a specific user. So now that we've added the Dynanook user table to our schema, we've tested it out using our WCF data service to make sure that we could retrieve the data and, and associate it with a specific user. Um, I did go in, once we once I ran the script to add that column, I did go back into a SQL Management Studio and in our to-do list item table in that new column, user, user ID, that's the to point to the user records, I went in and I, I added a couple of values in here for user ID 1 and 2 into our data so that we can uh, look at, at making our changes now to our view, model, and view and have it render that information on the uh, screen. So, we've now made this change. Go take a look at our view model. In the uh, OData function where we're retrieving all of our to-do list items, right, the current URL we're passing in is the to-do list item, which will return all the collection of all of the records from the to-do list item table. And we're telling it to expand and include the associated status record and category record when it retrieves each of those items. So what we're going to do now is just add user and say also bring back the user record. So uh, as it's reading each of those records, it'll use that user user ID value uh, from the from the each record, uh, go retrieve the user uh, through the foreign key, get the user record from the .NET new core user table, and return that user record as part of this collection that it returns. And that's the only change we need to make to the uh, view model because, uh, again, KO knockout mapping is going to create dynamic models based on this, the properties of the items. So by just including this, uh, we will now have access to all of that user data in our tasks collection. So we go save that. Let's go back and take a look at our view. So um, in the past, we were uh, displaying the person property. But uh, now what we want to do is we want to display from the user table, let's say, the display name. So in order to get access to that from the to-do list item, as I'm, as I'm doing my data binding, since I'm data binding to this collection, the way I get to that is through the navigation property. So it's going to be to-do list item uh, user dot and it uses dot notation so user dot and then any of the properties from the user table so user dot display name would give me access to that display name property so we'll just change this to do user dot display name save that let's go back to our module hit refresh and now we see we're getting the display name property out of the .NET new core user table. So um, this video, a uh, quick demonstration of how uh, using this template and entity framework WCF approach and knockout data binding will work not only with your tables that you design for your module, but also allow you to bring in uh, references to the .NET new core tables, create new associations between your tables and the .NET new core tables. Um, again, very careful with the scripts because the scripts that will be generated if you're doing model first are creation scripts and, and there's the possibility you lose data that way. So make sure you understand what you're doing and review that script before you right click and execute it. But once you've done that, um, you know, you can uh, now you can see that you can bring in data and join data between your tables and the core tables uh, and how easy it's done through Knockout with uh, the data binding and being able to bring in those associated records um, through navigation properties on your on your entity model. So um, next video we'll talk about add, edit, and delete. Thanks for watching.